Hi, I'm Shufen. And I'm Dan. Welcome to the Sungai Buloh Wetland Reserve, Singapore's only wetland reserve. Come join us as we explore one of Singapore's most extensive mangrove forests and get to know the rich biodiversity that calls this place home. Sungai Buloh, literally meaning river bamboo, is a natural river lined with mangrove trees growing in soft soil rich in organic nutrients. By the mid-1980s, with prawn and fish farms of carbon site, this area was slated for development into agricultural use. Fortunately, a member of what is now known as the Nature Society Singapore then discovered that the area was teeming with bird life and realised the importance of Sungai Bolo to the conservation of both local and migratory wildlife species. The Society proposed that the area be conserved as a nature reserve to serve as a centre for education and conservation. 87 hectares of mangroves were eventually designated for Sungai Buloh Nature Park, which opened in 1993. Because of its role as an important habitat for local and migratory bird life, the area was gazetted as a nature reserve in 2002 and was renamed Sungai Buloh Wetland Reserve. In 2020, a nature park network comprising the Sungai Buloh Wetland Reserve, other core habitats such as Mandai mangroves and mudflats, and nature parks was established. Over 400 hectares, or three times larger than the reserve, it safeguards mangroves and associated habitats, strengthening the conservation of biodiversity in the northern part of Singapore. The term mangrove refers to both the trees as well as the specific habitat. Mangroves can only be found in tropical, subtropical, and warm temperate climates, as they are not adapted to colder temperatures. Despite our size, Singapore is home to 35 species of mangrove vegetation. Sungai Buloh Wetland Reserve has 30 of them, some of which are rare or endangered. So mangrove species have evolved over at least the last 80 million years to be able to deal with the stressful conditions that we find along the coast, such as waves, water and salinity. So what evolutionary adaptations do mangroves have? Well, due to the coastal conditions, the water in mangrove forests can have high salt content. As such, trees here need to be salt tolerant. Mangrove trees cope with these harsh conditions either through salt exclusion or salt excretion. Take the roots of the Rhizophora mucronata for example. These roots are able to exclude salt as they possess root membranes that prevent salt from entering while allowing water to pass through. Other mangrove trees like this Avicennia alba excrete salt by pumping out the absorbed salt through glands on their leaves. So the coastal environment of mangrove forests in Singapore is characterised by fine sediments that are waterlogged and lacking in oxygen. And so to survive these stressful conditions, lots of mangrove species have had to grow all sorts of specialised roots in order to breathe and stabilise themselves. If you take a closer look at these Sonoratia casularis, you can see conical-like roots sticking straight up out of the mud. These are called pneumatophores or breathing roots, which help the trees to take in oxygen from the air around it. Species of the Rhizophora genus have distinct stilt roots coming out from their trunks. The white spreading roots mix the trees more stable and their exposure to air between the tides helps to increase the oxygen intake as well. So knee roots perform a similar function to stilt roots in terms of anchorage and aeration, but they look pretty different. So the roots of this tree, Brugiera cylindrica, they grow up out of the ground and then they bend downwards looking like a bent knee. Other mangrove species grow horizontal roots that look like planks. These planks have exposed regions which help with aeration. And so this mangrove tree, Xylocarpus granatum, has a wavy network of plank roots uh, to help anchor it. Mangrove trees are fundamental for supporting the ecosystem around them. Their dense root systems help protect crabs, fish and shrimp, and they act as a nursery for young aquatic animals. Above the water, the 
crowns of mangrove trees and somewhere below not only serve as roosts for local bird populations, but also for migratory water birds traveling along the East Asian Australasian Flyway, one of the major air routes used by migratory water birds worldwide. Mangrove trees also act as a home for tree climbing crabs and air breathing snails, which cling to tree trunks just above the waterline during high tide. The leaves of mangrove trees that fall into the water provide food for decomposers, which form an important part of the nutrient cycle that supports life in these environments. Animals aren't the only ones that benefit from mangroves. We humans do too. These benefits are known as ecosystem services. For example, mangrove forests in many countries help to elevate flood storm surges and act as buffers from natural phenomena like cyclones. They can help to soften the impact of natural disasters on coastal communities and aid in shoreline protection against erosion and rising sea levels. Such ecosystem services are especially important for an island nation like us. Mangroves are also highly productive ecosystems and they use photosynthesis to take our greenhouse gas emissions and turn them into biomass. And so compared to many terrestrial ecosystems, mangroves are much more effective at storing carbon. Tidal flooding results in waterlogged soil conditions, containing little oxygen which is required to break down plant matter and release carbon dioxide. As a result, when dead leaves, branches and roots are deposited into the soil, they don't get broken down as much by microorganisms and instead are buried over thousands of years, locking away the carbon in their soils. So this makes mangrove forests super important in our fight against climate change. Mangrove trees are also sources of food for us humans, acting as a provisioning ecosystem service. One mangrove tree you may be familiar with is the Nipah palm, the only true mangrove palm in the world. Almost every part of the tree is edible. Its seeds, when preserved in heavy syrup, are the atapchi found in local desserts like ice kacang. One approach we take to ensure our mangrove ecosystems remain robust is through reforestation. Such efforts by NPARCS re-establishes our natural habitats while conserving our existing mangrove ecosystems. So for example, we have established uh, mangrove nurseries in Pasiris Park, Coney Island Park, Pulau Bin and here in Sungai Bulo, we grow some of these mangrove saplings to give Mother Nature a lift. So one of the unique things about mangroves is that they are viviparous. It means that the young plant grows while it's still attached to the mother tree and these are called propagules. So propagules come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, this is some propagules from a really rare mangrove in Singapore, Seriops tagao. Mparks collect these propagules and grow them in the mangrove nurseries. When they are ready, then we plant them back into the mangroves with the community as part of the One Million Trees movement. Alright, that brings us to the end of our tour of Sungai Bulo. We hope it's given you a better appreciation of the mangrove forest that we have in our city and nature. And when you visit, remember to stay on the designated trails and refrain from climbing or jumping on the mangrove roots as they are home to many wildlife species. The map board at the entrance of the reserve will also show you the trails that you can take as well as the do's and don'ts. Thank you and see you soon!